Top of the morning to you! Today I'm not going to dye my beer green, but I will make delicious Irish cocktails for the greenest day of the year. St. Patrick's Day is a holiday that is celebrated annually on March 17, the day of the death of the patron saint of Ireland, St. Patrick. Originally it was a pure religious holiday celebrated in Ireland, however everything changed thanks to the Irish living in the United States, who began to celebrate this holiday less religiously, but more fun and, in fact, it turned into Ireland Day. The official symbol of the holiday is leprechauns, Irish flags and the image of a three-leaf clover. And of course, lots and lots of green everywhere. St. Patrick's Day is a public holiday in both Ireland and Northern Ireland and is also widely celebrated around the world, especially in the UK, Canada, USA, Argentina, Australia and New Zealand. For many people the traditional drink on St. Patrick's Day is green beer, a regular lager tinted with green dye, but you can do that without me, so I've picked out some more creative cocktails. The first of which is Irish made. Sam Ross, the acclaimed New York bartender known for creating such modern classics as penicillin and paper plane, created a cocktail named the Kentucky Maid. The drink features bourbon, lime juice, simple syrup, mint and cucumber. And I'll make Irish Maid a twist on this cocktail with Irish whiskey and a few more changes. The cocktail is shaken and to the shaker we're gonna add a cucumber. We're gonna need about two slices of cucumber. Irish whiskey. In my case, Irish whiskey finished in a rum cask. I have uh, different kinds of Irish whiskies uh, that were finished in sherry cask, bourbon cask, Calvados cask, but unfortunately I don't have Irish whiskey aged in a cucumber cask, so... 2 ounces, 60 milliliters. Then we're gonna need Saint Germain or other elderflower liqueur. Half an ounce, 15 milliliters. Freshly squeezed lemon juice, 3 quarters of an ounce, 22 milliliters. Rich simple syrup, two parts sugar, one part water, half an ounce, 15 milliliters. Now let's model our cucumber so it releases all of its flavors. Fill the shaker with ice and shake it vigorously, dedicating the shake to this comment. To the old fashioned glass, put a big ice ball and fine strain the cocktail. and garnish with a couple of cucumber slices. Let's have a taste. Great cocktail. It's kinda like a whiskey sour, but with Irish whiskey instead of bourbon. And with uh, elderflower liqueur, it makes all the difference. It's not like Kentucky made at all. It doesn't have mint and many other things that Kentucky made has, but it's a great cocktail, I highly recommend it. It's kinda green, not that green, more a yellowish color, but I think your drunk friends on St. Patrick's Day won't notice the difference. The next cocktail is called Good Cork. The impact of Phil Ward, a seasoned bartender from the New York City, on the cocktail scene cannot be overstated. He is notably acclaimed for his creation of modern classics like Oaksack Old Fashioned, debuted at Death & Company in 2007. While perhaps not as widely recognized, Ward's Good Cork cocktail holds its own, particularly appealing to enthusiasts of Irish whiskey and mezcal and other not-so-obvious pairings. Also, I couldn't pass up a cocktail with that name. This cocktail is also shaken, and to the shaker we're gonna add. Irish whiskey, in my case aged in bourbon cask, 1 ounce, 30 milliliters. Next we're gonna need mezcal, it is pretty strong and has a distinct smoky flavor. Also 1 ounce, 30 milliliters. Benedictine, it's a scotch whiskey liqueur, half an ounce, 15 milliliters. And Peychaud's bitters, about 2 dashes. And now a sudden twist, this cocktail is not shaken, it is stirred. So let's add some ice to the mixing glass and stir thoroughly to chill and dilute the cocktail. And then strain to the cocktail glass. And garnish with a couple of apple slices. I haven't tried such a strange cocktail in a while. It's smoky from the mezcal, it's pretty strong. Uh, it's kind of like a Manhattan but uh, less sweet, maybe like a reverse Manhattan where you add two times less uh, vermouth than whiskey. But it's definitely uh, not for everyone. But if you're not ready for the mezcal taste, don't even think about trying this cocktail. Both cocktails I made to this point subtly captured the spirit of Ireland without being kitschy or corny. 
The next one is called Midori Illusion and it has nothing to do with Ireland or St. Patrick's Day. But it's green. It is shaken. And to the shaker we're gonna add melon liqueur. <laughs> melon liqueur. 2 ounces, 60 milliliters. Triple sec or Cointreau. Half an ounce, 15 milliliters. Vodka. Half an ounce, 15 milliliters. Freshly squeezed lemon juice. 1 ounce, 30 milliliters. And pineapple juice. 1 ounce, 30 milliliters. Fill the shaker with ice. And shake it vigorously, dedicating the shake to this comment. Fill the highball glass with ice and fine strain the cocktail. Garnish with a dried pineapple slice and a homemade cocktail cherry. If you want to know how to make these, check out the video. Surprisingly not bad. It is sweet and sour. It's a cocktail you'd expect to drink at some random bar in some city, not, not the central city, but some faraway city where the bartender wanted to make something for the St. Patrick's Day. And it's not bad for what it is. Cheers. Next up is Irish Buck. The Buck category dates back to the late 19th century and is believed to have been a bit of a play on words. A glass of ginger ale was referred to a horse's neck, add a measure of liquor and it gives it a kick or a buck. Just three ingredients, Irish whiskey, ginger ale and a little bit of lime juice. What I love about uh, simple cocktails like this is that you can experiment with them, use real fermented ginger beer instead of store-bought ginger ale for example, or try different Irish whiskies. And it's so easy, you just build it inside the highball glass. Fill the glass with ice, Irish whiskey, this time aged in sherry casks. By the way, it's not an advertisement, <laughs> I don't have a sponsor today, but you can become a sponsor if you subscribe to my Patreon. One and a half ounce, 45 milliliters. A little bit of lime juice, about a quarter ounce, or seven milliliters. Stir a little and top up with ginger ale, about two ounces. Stir a little bit more and garnish with a lime wheel. As simple as that. Easy, refreshing, pretty nice cocktail. It's uh, more of a highball, so you can drink it in the summertime, but I think 17th of March is an okay date to drink this cocktail. By the way, a couple of centuries ago, when this cocktail was invented, ginger ale meant uh, more gingery drink, more like ginger beer now. So if you want to be more authentic, you can use ginger beer instead of ginger ale to be closer to the original. But I prefer ginger ale. There are several types of ginger ales. Some of them are without ginger at all, just lemonades. And this one is a little bit gingery and that's enough for me. If even the Irish buck has been too fancy for you, let me make you a St. Patrick's Day mimosa. It's so easy, it's borderline illegal. Build it directly in the champagne glass, which I'm gonna fill about a third of the way with orange juice, a splash of blue curacao liqueur for color, stir a little, and top up with cold, dry, sparkling wine. And this is how you make St. Patrick's Day mimosa. Just as a regular mimosa. I don't know what to say about it. It's just uh, sparkling wine with orange juice. It's not bad, it's a classic, but come on. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Check out my other cocktails here or how to make something at home DIY here. All the recipes in text form are on my website, drdashcork.com. If you want to support my channel, join the YouTube membership or become a patron. Drink responsibly and as always, dosvidos. And happy St. Patrick's Day!